Yay! <laughs> Welcome to Family and Friends, Women of Faith. We have got an incredible segment that we're going to be sharing with you. A moment with my friends, Lisa Bevere, Ruth Ann Jacobs, and Marty Tilton. They're going to be sharing from their life experiences. They're all women of faith, women of God, that have gone through very real issues that you and I have faced, and they are going through it, not just going through it, they've grown through it, and they are victorious. They're going to share some keys with you and I, but we're going to be talking about divorce. Now, that is something that is affecting every, every segment of our society. Leadership in our country, in churches, our friends, our family, all of us have been exposed and have been near to divorce. Now, I'm going to ask this group of ladies that I have today, how many of you have gone through a divorce? Raise your hands. Okay, at, at least 50% here in our Christian studio audience. And here's something that we want to say to you. There is life after divorce, and there is forgiveness and you are a complete person no matter what you've gone through. And we're going to be sharing some real insight today. But do you guys have any questions that you want to ask our group here about? Yes. Could you tell me, is there any closure to divorce? That's a great question. Ladies? Well, there is a closure to a degree. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 says that God, God says, I have thoughts and plans for you, thoughts and plans for your welfare and peace, not for evil so that you can have a hope and a future. That was one of the very first scriptures that God gave me in the very beginning. And then in Psalms 139, he talks to us about how he saw us in our mother's womb, how he developed us there. He was with us. He gifted us. He gave us talents. He gave us strengths. He gave us uh, all of the things that we needed to make it through this right. life. Right. And uh, in order to accomplish the God-given purpose that he created us for. I'm a believer that we're all created for a purpose, that right. we're not here by happenstance. Yeah. So I was meditating on that one day, uh, Psalms 139. And uh, the, the verse says in the Living Version, And I scheduled each day of your life before you began to breathe. And that was the heaviest thought to me. I said, this didn't catch you by surprise, God. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, this didn't catch God by surprise. It right. caught me by surprise because right. I would planned to be married forever. Right. You know, I didn't plan on anything happening to my vows before God. Mm -hmm. And what I realized, though, was that God had equipped me with the strength. Did he plan divorce for my life? That's the big question, right? Right, right. Did he plan this for my life? No. But God equipped us to be able to help us through so that we could continue to live to our God-given purpose. Mm -hmm. You know excellent, what I love about excellent. God? He just processes everything mm -hmm. so different than we process it. That's right. And I think that rejections from husbands and rejections from fathers are often the two most painful thing. And right. I, I haven't gone through a divorce, but I went through an incredible rejection from my dad. Mm -hmm. And I, what happened was I had taken all of my kids down for Christmas, and we loaded up the car with gifts from my dad. My dad never mm -hmm. gives Christmas gifts to our children. And we drive all the way down there for two or three hours, and we get there. It's been raining. We knock on his door. We're like, we're here, we're here. And there's a sign on the door saying, sorry, I had other plans. And my father's an alcoholic. And basically what he did was he just went off and drank. And I just was so ashamed and so embarrassed. And went back to the car and told my kids, I'm so sorry, Papa's not here. And, and a few weeks later, I was, try, you know, before God processing mm -hmm. this. And I just said, God, I just feel like I'm fatherless. Mm -hmm. and, and, and at that moment, I heard God say, you know what? What you see as rejection, I see as adoption. And he said, Ooh, see, he said, that's you know what? He goes, John needs something. He can go to his dad. He said, you need something. You come directly to me. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's like good. Isaiah 54. <laughs> right, God says, good. I drew you back like a wife that married mm -hmm. young and then was rejected. God loves the brokenhearted. And see, he sees it as, okay, Lisa, now mm -hmm. you're utterly mine. There's, right. there's no natural father. I am everything to you. And when we go through divorce, I think it's that time when we say, you know what, yeah. God? I try to draw my strength and, and my wholeness through a man. And I was disappointed. God, mm -hmm. now I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have a very real opportunity that people disappoint but you are the only right. one that will never disappoint. That I can depend on. That's yes. right. And, and I feel like so often with women, mm -hmm. we get our strength from our children. We get our strength from our accomplishments. We get mm -hmm. our strength from our husbands. And God told me, do not get your joy from those things because they're going to disappoint you. You're going to have to get it from me. And, and that is not what is natural. That is not and what's you know normal what else for us. Is that we become, 
Well, and, and this is scriptural. We become one with, with that mm -hmm. husband. But many times what we do is we blend in. We, we die to ourselves. We lose our identity. Right. Mm -hmm. And we lose our identity, and we become only what that person wants us to be. When really marriage is a celebration where you can be uniquely who right. you are safely. You can yes. be uniquely right. who you are, yes. and he can be uniquely who he is safely, mm -hmm. not this conformist. You right. lose yourself to when you get married. Right. individuals. Right. That's right. where a strong relationship truly is. And not, marriage should be a healing haven. Right. I know for me, John, being so supportive of all of my fears and insecurities and seeing me a totally different way than I saw myself caused me to be able to become who I always wanted to be, who I was as a young girl before things happened. But so often the church teaches women, you know, you don't have a personality, you just do whatever your husband says and you just get lost. And yet God loves out-of-the-box women. Yeah. He loves out of the box people. He loves people to be unique and well, celebrate. I'd say we're out of the box, Lisa. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> hey, we're we're way out of that box. I mean, well, you know, along the lines of the closure yeah. thing, because uh, because I'm still working through that. But uh, when we were down in Mexico, we went down for a, yes. a conference, mm -hmm. and I was having such pain in my wrists, and it was arthritis, and I had never had arthritis before. And it was so bad, I was telling Coral, I think I need to go to bed because it was affecting my whole being. And she said, well, Ruthann, that's a broken spirit. And it just, it was like a light bulb. I go, oh yeah, the Bible says that a broken spirit dries the bones, but a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Right. The minute she said that, it was truth. And you know, I'm not saying everybody who has arthritis that this is going to be a breakthrough. I hope it is. But for me, I haven't had any pain since that moment she spoke the truth. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it was great. But, but let me say this. When I, when I, after I'd been through the divorce, I'd gone to our pastor because when you are married to a man and right. you have taken on their vision, and right. I think it, it's a right thing, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. You want to build what God has spoken to that man of God. Right. So, but once he's gone, it's death to everything. It's your marriage. It's your, what you thought was your destiny. It's such right. a painful thing. And I said to my pastor, who is a, a prophet, I said, I, do you hear anything from me? What about <laughs> me? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All of mine. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And all he got for me, and he had prophesied the birth of my son. And so I knew God would speak to me eventually. <laughs> but what he got for me was... Not on our then, timing, yeah. yeah. But he did get something for me. He got that Ruthann, without an ending, there can't be a beginning. And I was thinking, well, what could be more of an ending than a divorce? But this is, this is where I'm at. This is what God spoke to me. For me, the ending was the inside stuff. And I'm still working right. through it, right. but it is the forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Not feeling that by forgiving that you're justifying right. this horrible thing that's happened to me. Yeah. But it's, it's letting go because I started getting a picture of gathering balloons of pain. I'd lost some twins uh, to miscarriage a couple years ago. It was very painful to me. I started to picture those as two little pink balloons. Then I'd lost another baby. Maybe that's a, a, a blue balloon. Right. Then, you know, the anger that you feel when you've been betrayed. It's like a big red balloon. And then last but not least, my heart. I saw you know, one of those pretty hearts that you find in balloon stores with a big X through it for a broken heart. And I realized that by the time I ended my life, if I was going to collect all these balloons, I would just have this big bouquet of pain. Mm -hmm. And it was going to skew my outlook on God. I'd be looking. You know how you It'd look through blocked. a balloon? You yeah, you couldn't see. Everything right, was right, right. just like the pain of my wrist. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be truth. And it's mm -hmm. the truth that sets us free. Because things can happen that are true, but it doesn't make them the truth. Exactly. exactly. Right. And God right. wants us to see ourselves, even not through the tragedies. The tragedies are part of us, but they are not who we are. Right. It's, right. And that's where we come back after divorce. We come back to, Lord, who was I meant to be in my mm -hmm. mother's womb? They don't define right. us. God defines right. us. Exactly. Right. And how we can us. take all things, mm -hmm. bad things, things that he did not choose, mm -hmm. but someone in our life has chosen. Mm -hmm. And he can turn all things and work all things together for good right. for them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Does that make divorce a good thing? No. No. But God it makes, it. yeah, God it hates divorce. No, God it hates it. It takes two and tears them. That's yes. right. And then, and then also it, it affects our children. But he doesn't hate people that have gone through divorce. No, right. he no. loves all of us. And we've all, every one of us, have blown it. And all of us have cause pain to someone somewhere mm -hmm. along the line, perhaps on purpose, 
perhaps just in ignorance. Mm -hmm. But God loves us, and He can take every pain, every, every stumbling block, everything that looks like this is the end. This is the end for my life and for my future and for my destiny. And He can take that. And when you give Him you with nothing yeah. else and say, mm -hmm. here I am, then He can take that stumbling block and turn it actually to the very thing that is your next step yes, yes. forward Amen. for yeah. your future. Now, mm -hmm. if this is you, if you've related to anything that my guests have shared today, I ask you to call the number on the screen. Get someone to pray for you. We're believing that this is a brand new start. God mm -hmm. bless you. Thanks, you guys. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. I can think of a picture of releasing those balloons. You guys, you know, John always has stand up. Welcome to Family and Friends, Women of Faith. I've got two of my very dear friends with me on this program, and I've got Ruth Ann Jacobs that will be sharing with us, and also Marty Tilton, talking about the real issues that you and I face and where we can have victory and the keys that can unlock our hearts and our lives to have a brand new beginning. We're going to be talking about how to walk through the tough times, times of trouble, and the only way out is through, and not, not camping in our right. trials, not like living there, but going on through. And what do you and I experience when we walk on through with God helping us? Please welcome with us today, family and friends, our guests. Thank you. <laughs> Now, this is uh, Marty Tilton's brand new book. It's hot off the press. Ouch! <laughs> it's so hot. And uh, the only way out is through courage in times of trouble. And I encourage you to get this book. But we're going to be discussing a little bit with Ruth Ann Jacobs and Marty Tilton about this. What do you guys want to share about that? Have you had any troubles? <laughs> few, few in life. Um, a lot of times people, well, everybody goes through troubles in life. I don't think any of us are going to... Um, not have to face certain things in life. It may not be divorce, it may not be death, or it may be divorce, it may be death, it may be the loss of a job, loss of a child, which I cannot even imagine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, lots of things happen to good people in life. Um, but it's what you do with it. Yeah. And Pastor Kennedy talked about the enemies in a new land. And when, when things happen to you, don't you think, Ruth Ann, it's like entering into a new land. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my gosh. Where am I, and, yeah. and what, what is this? Yeah. And you end up meeting every enemy that there possibly could be. Fear, right. instability, Good. greed. You end up meeting all of those things, you know, pride, arrogance. Those are things, issues of the heart that you end up having to deal with when you enter into these new lands. But what are you going to do with it? Mm -hmm. right. Jesus said that we could be victorious. Right. That, you know, you're going to have trials and tribulations in this life, but be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. Mm -hmm. In other words, he's living in us and we can overcome too. And when we sometimes enter into this new land, it's like entering into a darkness. Mm -hmm. We're unfamiliar with it, like we don't know the pathway. And then, uh, and you meet strange people in that land mm -hmm. too, don't you? Yeah, you know, I, the illustration that keeps coming to me is the story of Ruth. Remember when Ruth and, and is it Orpha? Is that how you pronounce the sister-in-law's name? They both had lost their husbands. They followed Naomi. Orpha followed her for a short time. They both were going, you know, where you go, we'll go. And they both went out. And I find that whenever people, a lot of people who haven't been close to God, initially they'll go through a loss and they may turn to God for a short time. And then they get to out in that new land. They were going Naomi said, I know where God's feeding his people. They followed her, followed her and Orpha got scared and went back yeah. to Moab to what she knew. And a lot of times, you know, people who, having gone through a divorce, I find a lot of times they'll go to the church at first and right. then they'll go back to the clubs or they'll go right. back to what was familiar instead of realizing the promised land is through the wilderness. And right. so I think that's very true and you've got to hold on. A lot of times you find people 
in this pathway. Right. Um, and they've been there for a very long time. Yeah. And they're comfortable there. Right. They've that set up camp true. there. Right. <laughs> right. That's true. And and I kept I I met a few of those along the last seven years. Yes. And um, my faith waned when I sure. had con conversation with them because they had no hope. They had no hope that God had better things for them. Right. And I kept looking for the light at the end of the tunnel because I wasn't staying here. Right. I wasn't created for darkness. No. I was created for light. Right. You were going through. I am going through. That's I'm right. not camping out here. Okay, have you seen the light at the end of the... Absolutely. You're in the light. Absolutely. You can tell, you can tell, yes. uh, obviously. And Ruthann, God has given you a word, restored and more. And more. And you have a, mm -hmm. a new ministry, mm -hmm. It's and people can email you at yep. R-A-J, restored. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And yeah, they can um, touch base with you, and also you have um, through this, uh, this is the thing that I, I just thank God for. You know... Bad things do happen to good people, and it's not what I like in my theology. I wish I could say that once you uh, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're never going to have a problem again. But as Marty said, be of good cheer. He has overcome it. But Ruth Ann has gone through a tough time, and God has turned that tough time around and is beginning, just beginning. We're, we're seeing it in our very midst, seeing God begin to do something in her life and through this tragedy, mm -hmm. turn it around mm -hmm. and multiply it Absolutely. to be food for many. Mm -hmm. And so Trinity um, Broadcasting is starting a brand new program called Seasons with Ruth Ann Jacobs and Friends. And I just wanted to say that if you let God be in control of your life, in the tragedies, in the hurtful times, and you say, okay, I, I don't understand it. There's things that have happened in Ruth Ann's life and Marty's life and my life that we cannot say, okay, this happened and this is why, and you can't label it. And I'm much more comfortable with labeling the situations that I've gone through, it's putting it in a neat little box. Mm -hmm. But many times there isn't a little box that we can put our life into. But this is one thing I can say. God is faithful. And no matter what sense or, or nonsense we can make out of our lives, when we give him what we have and where we're at, he will begin to multiply our life turn those things around for good, begin to bless us, and begin to lead us in a brand new way. And it's painful when we go out, like you said about Ruth, it's painful when you go out and you don't know where you're headed. And everything's different. You're going into a new land. You're going into a new destiny, a new future. But with God, all things are possible. Begin to look up and believe. Thanks for being with us today. God bless you. And remember, we've got someone ready to pray for you. And prayer is going to change your life. It's a new start, a new beginning. And I'm telling you that you're going to go through that situation. You're not going to camp there. And there is light. There is hope, isn't there? Yes. God bless you. Thanks for watching. You guys, that was great. <laughs> Thank you. They, they held up the...